welcome to Niche Sports. There is always something special about India versus South Africa or South Africa versus India. Well, of course, because India are touring there. And historically, ever since South Africa coming back to international cricket since 1991, these two cricketing nations have just enjoyed that bond. And it's off the field and on the field, there have been some really great contests played in the great spirit. And today we are looking ahead to a new series that is going to begin in challenging circumstances. But we are glad that India and South Africa are taking on one another. The series is going ahead. And the first test starts on Boxing Day, which is even more special. And to mark this occasion, I've got Sachin Bajaj, my partner at Niche Sports, joining me as always. And I've got former South African cricketer who has represented South Africa in three tests and three ODIs way back in the 90s. It's Omar Henry who's joining us all the way from South Africa. Hi there and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm very well. Thank you. And I can't wait for the test series to start. It's, it's fantastic to have you here. And, um, you know, what makes it remarkable? Just to, we'll just go back in time a little bit because you were a part of that historic 1992 series the first time that India toured South Africa and a lot of things happened on that tour and you know we've, we have a lot of memories. What are your memories especially of the first test in Durban which was definitely a historic occasion in more than one way? Well, the thing that I can remember it was a very very flat weekend unlike Durban and I remember I bowled an enormous amount of overs to Amre, who got 100 in that game. Um, he played absolutely superbly. And uh, he challenged me on every delivery that I bowled, um, whether it was a flighter delivery, whether it was a quicker delivery, whether it was slightly wide, slightly higher in flight, different in pace, whatever. He was just playing a fantastic innings, and I just couldn't. Um, dominating, but it was a fantastic contest and it really tested me as a spin bowler um, and it was my first official test in any case as well. And you said it tested you as a spinner. What was it like bowling to some of the others like a Sachin Tendulkar who was a, still a teenager? You had Mohammad Azruddin and Kapil Dev, again, really good players. So what was that challenge like and what are your memories of bowling to them because I think later on tour uh, Sachin got a hundred at Johannesburg and also uh, Kapil got a hundred at Port Elizabeth which was a backs to the wall yeah. hundred. Yeah well look just the way they played spinners uh, the way they used their feet um, they were quick feet and what I can remember that first stride when they came down the wicket was a, a very big stride unlike our batters who just came down the wicket, if they do, and that was a normal strike. But that first strike was so big that it allowed them to get to you and their feet were so quick. And then their hands, they could manipulate the ball through the gaps. So it was really an education for me as a spin bowler, um, how to cope. But every batter that I bowled, um, you face some challenges. And, and that was... It was a great education for me and, and it's something that I I cherish for the rest of my life. And, and now I do a bit of coaching and, you know, those kind of experiences just helps you to pass it on to other bowlers. Absolutely. And now we'll want you to wear that coach's hat because we are looking ahead to the first test between India and South Africa at Centurion. A little bit of rain is forecast, but let's be positive and hope for a, for a full game. But... On paper, as is the suggestion, would you agree that this time possibly it is India's best chance to win a series in South Africa? Definitely. Definitely. They, uh, on paper and on the recent form away from India, um, they have performed remarkably. Um, possibly the best I've ever seen an Indian side played away from home. So if one look at Australia, how well they played in Australia and at times with their backs against the wall and they came through and then still win it was just unbelievable. So that experience in itself and where 
South African team is at the moment lost quite a few of its senior batters, um, you know, regrouping as a team, haven't played a lot of test matches, you know, all those count against South Africa at the moment. So taking all that into consideration, India must be favorite. However, I must forewarn you that a South African team at home it's not an easy team, regardless of what state is in. So they will come and try their utmost um, to see that they can still not allow India to win a series in South Africa. Absolutely. And Sachin, uh, coming to you now, uh, uh, Omar just mentioned about the fact that South Africa, they're regrouping, but they've got some good players as well. As far as the batting is concerned, Dean Elgar, he's rock solid at the top. And you've got Aidan Makram, a promising batter who definitely can do a lot better in test cricket, has got the potential. So your thoughts on the South African batting to start with? See, uh, at the Global Cricket School, we've been working with Vincent Barnes in Cricket South Africa for the last 12 or 13 years. And a lot of the current players who come through up from Winnie Barnes' system who've come out to us. So, I mean, we've got Markham El Elgo. they be the mainstays of batting. But uh, watch out for uh, uh, Dwayne Oliver. He's the X factor in the series. He's quick. He's returned from Yorkshire. If, if I was a South African selector, he'd go straight in because he is going to be the X factor for South Africa. And he never writes South Africa off, off at home. In, in, in uh, the Transvaal or what they call Gauteng right now, they've got a very good record. And never write, never write off a South African team. Yes, India are favourites, but uh, you've got Keshav Maharaj, who uh, is also a top-notch spinner, has come on well. But this is a very young uh, South, South African team that will play very aggressively and with no fear. It'll, it'll be a great series. It's advantage India, but I mean, anything can happen here. Yeah. Omar, on that note, there's obviously Dwayne Olivia, as Sachin mentioned. You've got Rabada, you've got Ngidi. But how, uh, how crucial was the loss of Andrik Nokia? Because that extra pace, and he showed it in the IPL. We are no strangers to Andrik Nokia, but that pace made a difference for the Delhi Capitals. And of course, pace in any format works. Well, it, it's certainly a big blow. Because if I was a selector now and, do, and Andres Nokia was fit, I would have gone in Rabada, Welafir, and Nokia. And that would have been a handful yeah. for any Indian batter on South African conditions. Be that as it may, I think the mere fact that Duan is possibly the informed bowler in terms of domestic cricket. He has bowled superbly. He's bowled how to handle the Lions into the top spot of the four-day cricket. He's taken 20-odd wickets and he's basically cleaned up the top order of any visiting team that played against them. So he is in form. And I don't think Indian batters have seen a lot of him. So he will be entirely new to them. Rabada is, has got something to prove because. He is the senior bowler in the team, and he's got to carry that uh, brand um, for now. So he will come out all guns blaze. Um, and Gidi, I'm not sure whether they will play him because he, he, he just comes off an injury and he's, he hasn't played much cricket. But if he does, he will also want to show what he can do. But as a, as a bowling unit, um, Sachin mentioned Keshav Maharaj. He has grown not just as a spin bowler, but as a leader in that team. He has really made himself a senior player in that team. And I think, you know, for them, this is what they wanted. They wanted a top team to play against so they can see where they are in world cricket. What, how close is the gap between them and the top teams. Exactly. And Sachin, coming uh, to the Indian side of things, a few injuries, a few of them missing out on this tour. 
but uh, at the top now you've got kl rahul and mayank agarwal who are going to open the batting uh, where do you see the middle order you've got a lot of options in shreya sayer ajinkya rahane you know that whole toss up with you know pant being there saha being there you know who will be the wicket keeper your thoughts a little bit on the indian makeup of things i think besides, besides kohli i think uh, one or both from rahane and pujara will play rahane has a very good record in south africa so i i i i reckon he uh, he start our, our, our interesting selections are not going to be so much in the batting as they are going to be in the bowling i reckon hmm. because uh, you you i mean you'd want to go with uh, you that your attack is built like built around bumra so besides bumra i think uh, siraj and shardul shami would come in i, I can't see ishan starting uh it it would be from these and ashwin would be the spinner i think to, we need to get our bowling balance right like uh the the one good thing for us that south africa has a major injury bowling in their fast bowling department order to be donald devilius and shoals back again from what it was when we went there first time thank god we've got one of them on fit yeah but i mean and i'm telling you they will come very hard at us and i reckon someone like shardul will step up now to be the all rounder probably could bat at 7 or 8 bowl those crucial overs as a third or four or as the fourth bowler i i reckon he is no it's a no brainer starting with him and pro- probably i reckon even ir could make the cut yeah it's very very uh, ir over pujara i reckon would be my my selection i have a soft spot for bombay players and i come from here but sure. you know my my interesting it would be i'd like to see virat kohli bat at 3 he's the best batsman in india right now and our best batsman should bat at 3 and I, i hope he makes that step change is coming into the peak his peak years of 33 to 37 and i reckon he he's due a couple of big double hundreds or a big triple hundred and he and he's more chance of getting that if he bats at 3 i hope he make that step change and he goes up uh, and bats at 3 it it'll, it'll be a huge game changer for me him batting at 3 and what are your impressions omar of watching the indian batting lineup over the last few years and you know what how they can adapt to south africa traditionally um south africa has been a tricky land to tour for indians it's been a land of missed opportunities as well where they could have possibly done well and some of the greats of the past they've they've contributed but again when you look at the averages they aren't as high as they are in some other countries that they've visited why has that happened and also what can this unit do to adapt well i think the mere fact that the way they approached australia which is more or less similar conditions to us in terms of bounce um you know you're going to find the kookaburra ball also in south africa and they've done a well with the ball and with the bat against that kookaburra ball so that experience itself is going to help india an enormous amount the experience of them coming close to beat south africa in south africa will also be a crucial factor for them how much have they learned from that the mere fact that they know south africa is going to come hard at them is already a plus so therefore they can prepare themselves mentally that it's going to be five days of hard work every session is going to be an event there is no way that you're going to have breathing space they just going to come at you all the time so i reckon it is basically a case of mental toughness in terms of the indian batters how they're going to cope they've got the skill they've got the technique it is how they're going to cope every session with what south africa is going to throw at them and i can tell you now from a south african perspective these guys they know they need to show the south african public they need to show south african cricket Associ- um uh, association that they are the best players in south africa at the moment and they want to take south africa back to one of the top 3 in the world again and there is no better team than india to do that against 
And as a spinner yourself, having bowled on South African tracks, what do you expect from someone like a Ravi Chandran Ashwin who has definitely come into his own overseas over the last few years? He's found his mojo in overseas conditions, which wasn't there earlier. So what do you expect from him being a spin bowler yourself? Look, Ashwin is, is he's a top class bowler. He just comes out every year with something new. He's innovative. Um, he's got so much self-belief. And he is not an easy bowler to face when there's bounce and even slight turn, never mind big turn. So if there's slight assistance for Ashwin, he will give South Africa uh, problems. And I think the, the variation of the Indian attack is possibly what's going to challenge South Africa. Um, you know, Bumrah. Then you've got Sami who, who, who swings it and he's got pace. I, I would possibly say my gut feel tells me that Siraj could be a very, very dangerous bowler. And he could possibly make the difference on this trip between... There's a lot of respect for Bumrah. That I know for a fact. South Africa fears Bumrah. But you could sometimes focus so much on Bumrah that you forget about a bowler like Siraj, who I reckon has come on and really showed the world that he's capable of playing against the best in the world. You know, that's really fantastic that you mentioned that because Siraj has come under, has been praised a lot over the last year or so for his contributions. And, you know, sometimes when you're again focusing on someone, as you said, like a Bumrah, you may lose sight of, the other. Sachin, do you agree with that? Especially what Omar has said about Siraj. And Siraj has won praise. And it's also from Sachin Tendulkar very recently. Uh, he's, our, he's our X factor bowler for South Africa, like uh, Dwayne Olivier is for us. He's going to be for them. So these are the two X factors. It'll be interesting to see whose X factor outdoes the other. Yeah? I think that's where the battle is going to lie. And again, we've got uh, someone like an Umesh Yadav who may again have to wait in the wings. And hopefully, we've got a full test match to start with. So, Omar, provided the rain stays away in Centurion, considering the fact that India generally aren't the best of starters on tour, you know, this, is, this being the first test, there has been no practice match as such. What would be your call for the Centurion test match? Right now, both teams are in the same boat. South Africa haven't played much cricket. Um, and most of these guys that's going to come and play in test cricket haven't played domestic cricket. So they also very much underprepared. So it's, for both teams, they are in the same boat. It's who is going to make the best of that first session, that first day, whether they bat or whether they bowl. Once you get the grip and you can dominate that first session and make an impact, I think you can possibly win the mental game. And if you then stay in control and the weather permits and the game goes five full days, I reckon it's anybody's game. Right. And Sachin, your call on the first test at Centurion? I think it'll be a close one because... Uh, both teams will be sussing the other team out, uh, try, trying to, it, it'll go session by session. I think the aim for any team would be to win individual sessions and build towards a test match. It's a game of chess out there. Home advantage to South Africa, experience to India is just about anybody's game. Exactly. And I'm so glad that we've had this conversation. Thank you, Omar, for joining us and adding perspective to this, especially you know, sounding the warning that South Africa are a formidable force at home and we expect nothing less. No, definitely. And look, for me, I've watched the Australian series. I saw India play remarkably well in foreign conditions. I expect no less now. I know Kohli wants to narrow that gap and make India a worldwide phenomenon. And the only way he can get it his last hurdle is South Africa at the moment. And it's right, he's confronted with it now. And they've got a good coach. 
in Dravet. I think he knows. He's played here several times. Um, the bowlers have played here. Uh, Sachin mentioned Rahani. He knows the conditions. He's, he's played some good knocks here. Kohli himself. So if I can say one thing, I think you might miss Ro Rohat um, Sharma. Ah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, of course, so a loss because, you know, he was really, as a test cricketer, really gunning to go abroad and prove himself. He did that in England. And yes, I'm sure India will miss him. Sachin, uh, Omar just mentioned about Rohit Sharma. He mentioned about the fact that we can expect some really good cricket. Your thoughts on this, especially considering what India and South Africa has meant over the years. It's never been easy. It's like the final frontier. As Steve Waugh had, had termed India for Australia, in a sense, South Africa is the final frontier for India. Never have they won a test series there. I think Rohit Sharma will be very, very, very sorely missed. But our bench strength is good and it's, uh, it, it's opportunity for someone to take it up and uh, for us to build. I reckon, I reckon in India will uh, uh, quit themselves very uh, credibly in South Africa. The first test match is the key. The, the one good thing is that we don't have to, uh, I mean, you, the, we're not going to get any of the old Phil Russell, hard bouncy Kingsmead wickets that used to get back in the day. So, uh, <laughs> the pitch is a little for us now, yeah. And, uh, and Omar, you know about the wickets Phil Russell used to produce back in, in those days. Kingsmead was, I, I reckon, along with the Wacker, the, some of the fastest pitches in the world. And, not having a Brett Schultz bowling at you on that pitch does help, or, or Alan Donald for that matter. Yeah, different ball game now. And, oh, it's certainly and 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 what I can remember is sometimes they leave grass on it, and then it will just be like a snake pit. It will just go sideways as well. So look, it's not like that anymore. But I still think it's going to be a fascinating test series. I can't wait for Boxing Day. 100% and we too are waiting and why did Sachin have to remind me about Durban because the first ever test match <laughs> I watched on TV which was from Durban was India going to South Africa in 96 and India got bowled out for 100 and for 66. So not very happy memories of that. I, <laughs> I, I, I was at Kingsmead that day. Oh my God. Robbie Kurz. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, something the Indian fans would like to forget. We'll focus a little bit on the happier memories like the Joburg 2006 test or the Durban 2010 one. So Indians would like to focus on that. But Omar, thanks once again for joining us. And I hope uh, you have a very good festive season. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you and to everyone watching and joining us from South Africa and from India. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And the same to you guys. Thanks, Sachin. Thanks, Nisha. Thanks, Omar.